unabashedly excited and extremely honored to be in conversation with Ma Anand Sheila. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. The entire pleasure is mine. And we're all so lucky to have you here back in India. It's been 34 years and you're fi you finally returned. What made you return? I was invited by the Radun Literature Festival and Humans for Humanity and Sipping Thought. These are three organizations invited me. Their invitation felt right. And I said, why not? And what kept you away for so long? Work. I was beginning my new life. The new life needed attention to make sure that it functions. It was not the easiest work that I had chosen for myself, working with handicapped and demented people, old and young. Attention was very much needed. In these 34 years, what do you feel has changed in the country and what do you feel has remained the same with respect to you or otherwise? Much has changed and it is a pleasant surprise. Beautiful young people like you I see everywhere, very motivated, very capable. And as far as I'm concerned, the country is looking at me with a new look, with pride, daughter of India. Is that something you missed? Is that something, was opposition something you were scared of that kept you from returning back? No, no. I'm not easily scared. Fear, I don't know. I remember that interview of yours, a man like you make me run for cover. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think we all remember that one, of course. Right, and I feel the same even today. Maybe my age makes me look fragile, but I'm not fragile. I don't think any of us think you're fragile, <laughs> for sure. You know, you've become, especially after Wild Wild Country, you've become a feminist role model. And if there are young girls who are inspired by you, what do you want them to take away from you? And what are the mistakes you want them to avoid? I would say, don't be a category like feminist or non-feminist. Be yourself and do what you want to do and don't accept any abuse from anybody. People ask me question about sexuality and nonsense, but they don't know how much sexual abuse goes on in different areas of the world in a different manner, behind the closed door, behind the curtain. Don't put up with it. You have the power to say and declare, no, I will not stand for that abuse. There's so much strength in everything you say. We feel you're unshakable, but when it comes to Bhagwan and when you talk about him and when you refer to the things that he has said about you later, you always call it a lover's stiff. And I feel a lot of people who look up to you feel disappointed that you would not fight for yourself, you wouldn't, uh, you know, defend yourself and, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a submission to everything he says. You are wrong. It is not a submission. When you dissolve in such a manner that I have dissolved in Bhagwan, you cannot separate me. He is my strength and I was his strength. What he says in the madness of the moment where Men like Bhagwan drops to that point. You take it as a point for you to learn something. 
I never took it personally. Through it, he taught me, you be yourself. You don't take it personally. And I didn't. And I am myself. And being myself is the strength he taught me. Today, would you still call yourself a believer? I wasn't a believer then, and I'm not a believer today. I was in love with the man. You never believed in enlightenment? No. Did I ever meditate? No. I was myself. I was dancing in the feeling of love, in myself, enjoying every moment, every look from him. I was busy dissolving in him. I think we saw all of that in uh, the documentary, uh, your love for Bhagwan, the kind of uh, surrender that you had. Uh, but looking back on it now, uh, would you have been different? Would you have done anything differently if you could have? No. If it was love, and it was love, you do the same. You dissolve. You dissolve in love. There is no other way. And when you speak of Bhagwan as your lover, uh, in India especially, because sexu sex and sexuality is clothed and mired uh, behind so many curtains, uh, do you feel, especially here, people ask you a lot more questions about the sexual aspect of the relationship, which wasn't there, but do you feel like you're asked about it a lot here? Yeah. I'm asked about it thousand times, two thousand times, ten thousand why, times. Why do you find people find it so unbelievable? Why because they are not true to their own sexuality. They hide themselves with their sexuality and therefore they become curious. Do you feel now we're more liberal, we're more open about sex uh, in India? Would you feel that way? I see girl dress in fancier clothing. Mm -hmm. They make themselves up fancier than I, my time. Mm -hmm. They wear their high heel shoes which swing their hips. I didn't have to do all of it. Okay. I was clear about my love and I didn't, I didn't have to even say that I was a feminist. I was comfortable near my lover. Would you call yourself a feminist now that you know uh, the term and you know that it means uh, believing in equality, do you call yourself a feminist? Feminist never compares. I never compared myself with a man. I stood hand in hand together with men. I worked with hand in hand together with men. Maybe men had to compensate more because I was a big boss. All right. But that was just a joke. We don't have to compete. Mm -hmm. Women are just as important as the men. We all have women within us and men within us, yin and yang. Where does this comparison come that is oppression of the women? And people have to grow up. Is that something that you want to work for, oppression of women, uh, especially in countries like India? You know, it is uh, a, a problem. They face a lot of sexual abuse that you also spoke about. Uh, is that something that you would want to actively work towards? Is that part of... If the opportunity comes, I will not fall back. But are you looking for an opportunity to open something here? Because you do have uh, homes for the handicapped uh, across the world. I am working on homes for handicapped. I want to draw people's attention 
to older generation and younger people who suffer with some illnesses. I do work with psychological and mental issues of the people. I would love to do something like that. And I work with female and male. And boy, I protect my people. I take care of them. I protect them. I see to it that they, their rights are not violated. You know, it's our time's up, but I have one last question for you. Please. You have such a huge following now, uh, following the documentary. After people uh, have seen you, they've gone back and read upon you, you've become a huge pop culture phenomenon. Would you ever consider starting a commune of your own? I live in a commune. <laughs> Even today, I live among my patient and my team Whoever wants to stay with me, they're most welcome. I have 30 patients and 27 team members. And we live together. We work together, we live together, we dance together. So to be a part of this communion, you have to be a patient or a volunteer? You come as you come. But Switzerland is a place where I live. Immigration is not so kind as I am. <laughs> so that responsibility I don't take. But you welcome everybody who wants to join you. Definitely. Whoever wants to come and participate in the life that I live, most welcome. And even if you come as a visitor, do come and have a cup of coffee with me. I'll definitely take you up on that. Thank you so much for this. It was an honor. I thank you. I like beautiful girls like you <laughs> giving such a wonderful interviews. You're the, you're the path that made it wonderful. It's been such an honor. Thanks so much. Thank you.